Hey, it's Alexander Vitkin. So have you noticed that a lot of people, they spend lots of time in their business doing menial tasks that are repetitive? And as a business owner, you may not want to keep doing it. You may not want to keep doing menial repetitive tasks because there are other things you could be doing that are A, less boring, lead less to burnout in the long term, and just make more money for your business. So things you should be doing versus things you shouldn't be doing in short. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to outsource to virtual assistants, how to find virtual assistants and hire them that are smart and can do the job better than what you could have done yourself and who improve the processes, right? So many people don't know this, but you can actually hire people that are smarter than yourself to do tasks. And because they keep doing the tasks, they get better at the tasks than you were because you were doing 20, 30 tasks, whereas they, they can focus on three to seven tasks instead of 20 tasks. And that means they specialize more in your business and they get better at these tasks. And then they come up with all these improvements that you may have not noticed yourself because you're the business owner, you're just dealing with too much, right? How do we solve this? How do we find virtual assistants in 2019 that are smart one to work for a reasonable amount of money and do a great job and potentially even overqualified so you can keep teaching them and they can learn other things in your business and get better at other things in your business and take over other things in your business that you won't have to do in the future. And if you won't have to do them in the future, that means you can do the things that you love and the things that make more money in your business. The reason I decided to share this is because I've noticed many of the uh, traditional, let's say, hiring processes that online marketers and online business owners use, they no longer work like they used to. For example, we used to go on Upwork and you just get like 200 applicants for something and then you're just like, oh, well now, uh, you and you, maybe your application is good enough, but can you do it cheaper? That shit doesn't really work anymore. These days, you need to put in a little bit more effort when you're hiring, and you need to use the carrot method more than the stick method. You need to give people more than you used to give, and you, you can't be as uh, efficient like you used to be in terms of denying people jobs and stuff like that. That's because they have many opportunities days. Like, people understand that they can get jobs online. Freelancers know that they can get clients very easily and they know what the market price is. It's being put, put all over the internet because the job websites, the freelancing websites, they tell them you should charge higher, you should charge higher, you should charge higher. So it's harder to get those cheaper people that are smart to work for a reasonable amount of money. It's getting harder and harder because they're getting too many opportunities. So how do you get around this? How do you fix this? As an entrepreneur, you need to know this because this directly affects your bottom line, directly affects how much money your business makes. That's basically what's been happening over the last few years. It's been more standardized. People have gotten better, better at hiring. And if you don't get better at hiring yourself, you will not be able to keep up. You'll be using these old outdated techniques and not really get the results that we used to get with 10% of the effort, right? So you need to put in a little bit more effort in better areas of hiring to get the same results or better as a few years ago, right? So here's how I do it. There is Upwork, obviously. So if you go on Upwork these days, you're not gonna get to 200 applicants anymore, but you can still, for certain things, if it's the offer is good and you're paying a good enough amount of money, you know, like I would pay below average, but you know, nothing crazy. And if you hire in certain countries, where the salaries are lower, you can still get good deals in Upwork. You can still post an Upwork. You can tell people to apply uh, via, you know, talk to you on Skype, do the standard method of giving them a one day test, a one week test to see if they're doing well. You can test them for attitude by asking how their previous jobs went, how they quit, why they quit. You can do all these things, right? And you should do these things, right? But Upwork may not be the best solution these days. It's, it's a great solution for billing. It's a great solution for invoicing. If you're uh, hiring people and tracking their hours, it's a great solution for that. It's a great solution for finding certain types of freelancers, but it's not good for everything. It's not good for volume. It's not good for a large volume of people that you may wanna hire for two to $9 an hour, like it used to be, right? That's what Upwork used to be. You could even hire people for $1 an hour in their countries. That was a lot of money. Everyone's happy, right? It's, now it's a little bit harder to do that. There are other ways of doing it that can achieve the goal, or you can keep doing Upwork, but pay, you know, six to $25 an hour. So it's more money, but people are more qualified now. They work more efficiently, but it is more expensive. So it's harder to make a profit on that. Outside of Upwork, there are jobs like online jobs at PH, where you can get people for 200 to $1,000 per month, or whatever the equivalent of that is like two to whatever, like seven, $8 an hour, basically. That's what you can get people for on uh, online jobs at PH. The advantage of online jobs with PH is, again, it's cheaper, but the disadvantage is 
and they speak good English. That's also an advantage. This advantage is you do get applicants. You don't get 200 applicants like you used to, but you get like 20, 30, 40 applicants, but they are in the Philippines and only in the Philippines. So it's, if the time zone does not correspond with your working hours, it's hard to communicate with them. And you need to understand their culture really well to be able to communicate with them effectively. Otherwise you have problems, problems of communication which you may not want to learn how to deal with because that's a lot of work from your end. And yes, you do save a few dollars per hour on hiring someone, but it's a lot of work. So onlinejobs.ph, great site, has advantages, has disadvantages. What I like using these days, however, is not onlinejobs.ph, not so much, and not so much Upwork, but I like to use uh, a different website. So what I figured out is locally, if you do local hiring internationally from online, right? But if you do local hiring, that tends to work better. Now, here's what I mean by that. All these people on, on these advanced freelancer platforms, they're becoming more educated, partially thanks to people like myself, and they know how to charge, right? They're, they're online, they know stuff. Whereas if you can find people that may not know all this thing, all the things that they know, because they're looking locally for jobs, you can still get the same deals as you were getting four years ago when things were easy. So here's what to do. You go to a website called jobboardfinder.com, and this is an aggregate website of all the hiring boards worldwide. And you go in countries like Serbia, Poland, and so on. You hire locally in Eastern Europe or in other countries, depending on your needs. You know, I have a guy, a client, he hires in Suriname because he wants people to speak Dutch, whereas he doesn't want to pay the local Dutch salaries. So he goes and hires in Suriname, right? But most people, they want to hire English speakers. Uh, they don't have these strict language requirements, right? If you need German, you can hire in Bosnia as well, for example, right? You can hire at a fraction of a salary for someone who would live in Germany, for example. But let's say this is not the most important thing. The most important thing is volume, and the most important thing is to hire people who speak English well enough. And you want to hire engineers, you want to hire designers, whatever you want to hire, you can hire them. And you go to jobboardfinder.com, you look for the best local job websites with the best score on jobboardfinder.com, and then you figure out how these job websites work. For example, I'm hiring right now in Serbia. It doesn't matter which website I, I, I chose. I just chose, I don't even remember the name. It's just the best ranked website in Serbia from jobboardfinder.com. And I basically posted a job similar to what I posted Upwork and I'm getting just these great applicants like engineers and so on. Great, smart people with lots of international experience. They know English. And I posted that I want to hire them remotely. So I'm getting people who can work remotely, have good computers, good internet speed, and so on. So what's happening is I'm getting these smart people. They don't want like crazy amounts of money because they're, they're not like only professional online freelancers. They're more like, I want a job that pays a little bit better than locally in Serbia. But at the same time, I'm looking for an opportunity to work internationally. That's what I'm really interested in. And I'm a smart person. They're smart people, right? They're saying I'm a smart person who wants to learn uh, to work online, to work internationally with international companies where I can learn. So they're more inclined to be A players who want to work hard and not get paid thousands and thousands of dollars because they're in Serbia where salaries are like 200 to six, seven hundred dollars per month, which is good. It's very good there. So you can hire an engineer for four hundred dollars there, for example. So you go to the website, you put the job post up, they do like all these verifications. You know, that took a day. Sure, I lost a day on that, but now I'm on the site. I'm paying 50 bucks. I'm getting all these engineers applying straight to my inbox and they're taking pictures of their desks. They're doing IQ tests, whatever I need them to do, especially once they get them on Skype. Once they get them on Skype, I do the standard job interviews, standard testing of a day. And it works just great. Like you could just, you could just hire people. You can hire engineers. My friend hired an engineer in Serbia. He's figured out all kinds of automation for his business, even though he wasn't really knowledgeable in this, he just figured out how to do that because he's an engineer. That's what engineers do. So my friend is hiring engineers, paying them two, three, four hundred dollars per month full time. And they're sitting there and doing real work, good work, and everyone's happy. And my friend's business is, is breaking records every month. Like he's doing tens of thousands of dollars per month. And yeah, I'm starting also to hire in Serbia, for example, right now. You don't have to hire in Serbia. There's so many countries where we're just trying out Serbia right now. You can do any of those countries in Eastern Europe, or you can do South America. You can do even Asia in some countries. Uh, it's just that I prefer Eastern Europe for the time zone, and it's just a little bit easier to communicate sometimes. So that's, that's basically what I'm doing these days. That's the update on the hiring process, guys. Very good, because I have all these hiring processes on YouTube. I have all these hiring processes I've been sharing over the years, but this is how it works 2019. Try it out, great stuff. If you'd like more processes for how to run your business properly, how to automate, how to scale, 
and how to really build a business, not just be a freelancer yourself, do message me. I, I have more things like this to share to you. We run a private mastermind for entrepreneurs. Uh, some of them are doing six figures, seven figures and eight figures. We're doing really well. We're accepting new members currently. Between seven to 12 people per month are uh, able to join. So if you'd like to apply, if you have any questions, do message me here on Facebook. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.